Good morning everyone, welcome back to Tim's Cotswold Farm. So today's the day I can finally show you what we bought. Now I've just finished editing, so it's about four hours of footage which I've got down to just nine minutes. So I hope you enjoy, here you go. <music> That is right, we've gone and bought an auto steer system for our tractor. So today's video is all gonna be about trying to install it. It's supposed to be a self-install system, so we're gonna see how easy it is. Right, so here we are. So I was going to get out and give it a quick wash, but I think, to be honest, it's easier to work on a dry tractor than it is a slightly damp tractor, even in this sort of heat. So we're going to get it out. I'm going to put it in front of the shed, and we're going to see how easy it is to install. Sure, we watch the shed. We've left the drill on, because obviously we haven't used it for anything else since. Sunday morning, I'm going to give it a couple of hours. So today is the day. The one thing that I've been waiting to share with you for the last couple of months, as I said, bought it months ago, arrived just before I went on holiday. With this heat wave, it seems a perfect opportunity for us to install it. The one question we still have is, so we have to take this off, take this steering wheel off, and then we have to put that one in the box on. But what we use this for, which other tractors don't, if you turn this, this comes up and down. So if we put that steering wheel on, does that mean that this is effectively going to be redundant? Got them all laid out. Most important thing, obviously the screen. So I think what we'll probably start by doing is installing the ram mount into the tractor. And then when dad comes out, I think we'll probably then both try and stick the dome on the roof. I think that's what I need. The beauty is you guys can see us doing it for the first time as well. So I really like the fact that they provided these rubbers which go over here to mean that you don't take any of the paint off the door. Unfortunately, it's not going to clamp on there like I want. So I'm going to tighten these up and say, get the ball on. Moment of truth. Set the old ball mount on. This isn't going to work. We've got the drill box. We've got this box. We've got this in the way. So I'm not quite sure how it's going to work yet. We've really just stuck it on here. We're just going to get a screwdriver and scoop this off undo the bolt, take the steering wheel off. The steering wheel was well and truly stuck on there, so we were lucky Dad had a tool from his old days as an engineer we could use. Protect the thread. Tight. These are tight. That was probably the hardest steering wheel we've ever had to try and get off. Well, I've ever had to try and get off anyway. Obviously, I can't speak for Dad. But finally, she's just popped and she's gone. Look at that. So our very useful little tool went underneath like a pair of jaws and we've managed to get it off. That took a lot of elbow grease. Now we have to choose which collar to use. Got number four. And that fits nicely over that collar. So we'll put that to one side and the steering wheel has to go on first. And then this spindle thing goes down through the center of the steering wheel. And I think it then bolts onto the steering wheel. Somehow that is bolted. There we go, that's better. It's gone in a bit deeper now. So the next job, we've got these little bolts and we need to put them in these holes. Got some classics that we're listening to. Whilst we're sticking it in, obviously YouTube copyright reasons, can't play it whilst I record. Here you go. So we're just getting a pair of long nose pliers to reach down here now to do this nut up. Hmm. 
So these bolt up under here and then this will run tight like that and stop this motor from spinning. So it's pretty hot now, I think it's probably about 30 degrees. Next thing we're gonna do is put the SIM card into this screen and then we're gonna get the cables and we're gonna start hooking it up. This is our SIM card, exactly the same as a phone. So it turns out there's actually three different size SIMs. Don't do what I've just done, shove a smaller SIM in a larger hole. So we've got our aerial, we had to screw that in. This is a magnetic plate and I think it sticks to itself. Then we've put our little Sviverken box in and we've hooked it all up and we just need to tighten that nut. So to get power temporarily, we're gonna try and just hook something on here. Brilliant. Let's thread it into the positive and negative mouldied on. And we have life. So now I'm gonna try go through this book. So I'm gonna work this out and then we'll come back once the screen's working. Here we are. So what you do then is we've got to pick up all of these different points and input all of the different positions. So a couple of days have passed. And um, as I say, we had a few issues. So we're just trying to sort them out. So Matthew from RTK Net is coming down from Cambridge and he's gonna look because we don't seem to be able to get an RTK signal. So he's kindly offered to come down for an hour or so and just sort it out for us. Didn't discuss this tracks before, you'll note Ford, but new Holland badge. So you've got one to four, five to eight, high and low box. These are our spool valves, the arms, and then the PTO, four wheel drive, diff lock. Got a camera when we used to have it on the baler, revs. Jump in the map rope. So I'm just going to move this into the wet pit and say Matthew will be here soon and we're going to try and put the box on the roof. So I've ordered some sticky tape. In the end, I went with like number plate fasteners. Dad's done one clamp for the front and then we just put some sticky tape clamps on the back. And then hopefully we can just have a little measure up and start working towards getting it all calibrated. Right. So Matthew's arrived with his laptop. Let's have a look at the screen. It's day three. Uh, rained off yesterday so we're going to come back to it looks like we're going to have to fit the angle sensor and then i'm also going to try and solve the problem that we can't seem to drive in a straight line it keeps powering the steering wheel full lock left and right right so i think we're pretty much set there's a few things we need to work out but we're good enough at least we've got a signal so we can go see if it'll actually track the tractor so you have to calibrate it so i'm going to go out into one of the fields out the back and give it a quick test so we have to drive from a to b and then turn around and then drive back along that b line and then hopefully it will track itself back and that's how it calibrates. So let's give it a go. And there we are. So it's following itself along the line. You can see that was point A, point B's up here. And away we go. You see the path it's following. Very happy with that. The next thing we're gonna to have to do is put some sticks out and see whether the RTK is actually as close to the line as we think. I'm actually really excited because I've had a couple of hiccups already. The dome was on the wrong way around, so it was taking me backwards instead of forwards. I thought it'd be smart enough to know, but it wasn't. And it is steering. Got the screen here, so we've got a round mount on order, so it's gonna come up here. It's gonna look like um, the new Sidewinders. So yeah, really happy. It looks like the tractor's actually being calibrated. The RTK is working. I'm absolutely chuffed. So now we are farming. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Please give it a thumbs up. Any questions you've got, let me know. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.